Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a match from the really big tournament number three, round four, right here on x by stream. I am Rails Barlow, tournament director, and one of your two casters for tonight. We are bringing you a match between Team Status Quo and Team Sultans of Suck, with Sultans of Suck using one ringer here on Hard Rain Downpour. And co-casting me tonight, very graciously after playing his own match, is the captain of Team Melee Runners, Mr. Hib. How are you, sir? I'm doing really good, Rails. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, I'm expecting a very interesting match here tonight between two teams which are relatively newer to the pro mod slash competitive scene, but besides that, I think they're still going to be able to give us a pretty good game. So, are you expecting similar things, or what are your thoughts on this match? I don't know, man. I, I'm looking forward to a really good match between these two teams. Um, they seem, you know, they're kind of like newer, t newer beginning teams, and, well, we don't know what to expect from them, but obviously we're probably going to get a really good game from both of them. We expect good things. I hope so. So with that being said, we are going to give out a quick roster rundown here, and I will let you take the survivors, I will take the special infected. So who do we have for the survivors and Team Sultans of Suck, Hib? Well, survivors, we have Dark, Hunter, Boomfrag, Homage, and Firestar. Indeed, and I think they're probably asking you to ready up for that whole caster thing, where someone's saying, Hib, please, in chat, and <laughs> X-Fi didn't X mention that. It. There was a lively conversation in the caster moment beforehand. We have a 10% tank. For our special infected status quo, we have Horizon, Broken Wings, Astro Molly, and Sir Kuzum. But this tank's going to be at 10% here, so the survivors are going to have to push in here and try to get guns, and indeed, they are doing just that. The first hit is going to be a Spitter, Hunter, Boomer, and a Jockey, so once they have guns, they should be able to handle this pretty well. Hunter going in, getting M2 and shut down. Boomer getting a single boom out in the back. Spitter got a little bit of chip damage. Jockey landed for a couple picks there, and that's going to be an okay to spit damage there, Hib. Yeah, actually, they did a really good job grabbing those guns. That's what you really want to do. Hopefully, they also upgrade guns right here since they have no spawns up right at the moment. They can just easily get the uh, Silent Susie and the Chrome Shotgun if they choose to do so. Apparently, I also got baited because the tank went from being, I thought it was 10%, but it actually moved to 25 I think, because we had to restart the chapter. So I thought it was earlier than it was. That would have been an extremely early tank. Instead, they get the witch out of the way. It's going to be a charger, boomer, hunter, and a spitter. There's the tank. Charger's going to spawn up right here. Enough. Yeah. He mm, he wasn't really able to get a whole lot. Boomer didn't get a whole lot either. And the tank's up in the hands of Astro Molly. Now, Hib, where do you like to play this tank of Survivor? All right, so basically, the place to go would be the little room right, right there where they're going right now. Um, the way the tank wants to counterplay is to get the car inside and probably commit from the top of the roof. Uh, one way to do this would be to actually get that Asai in and you can rock from that door. You see that right door right there? Mm -hmm. um, you can actually rock as your Asai is going in so you can play a uh, long rock tank. Or what this tank is doing, he can keep the car in there and push it in and then push the survivors towards the car. Really both good ideas, but it seems that the tank is just trying to do the secondary strategy which is to get this car in there. Indeed, and I think he's going to actually get it in the next couple of hits here. Actually, it slides out instead. There is a boomer still just kind of wilding around. That's the bot boomer, as a matter of fact. Tank is actually giving up on his hittable and deciding to push in on this. He is going to be able to catch Nick right there, because I think he got M2 in the back, and bot boomer is going to go in and get a single boom. This and he got a stumble on the tank, too. Wow. Oh, shit. That's a two-cap. That is still a two-cap. That's going to be an in-cap right there. The hunter still has a pin. The jockey still has a pin, and this is actually going to be a wipe here, Hib, I'm pretty sure, Holy unless that clear shit. went out. Did that clear go out? Did the clear, clear did actually yeah. go out. Oh, shit. Yeah, I think Boomfrag got clear. <laughs> yeah, dude, I was I was really confused there for a second, but now Smoker's going to get a repull, and I think if the tank can cover that, that's going to be status quo getting a wipe here on this first tank, Hib. Wow, really good show by the Infected team, really showing that they do know how to play Infected as well. Hopefully they actually do manage to score more points in this first team that, you know? Yeah, I would hope so, and really, I think what's happened with the survivors there, I think they just got multi cap but that was obviously, like, something that was not expected, having that boomer as, like, the fourth SI support there and actually landing as a bot. I thought it was gonna, like, despawn or something, but I guess since it was a boomer, then it didn't really have to? I'm not exactly sure how that works. One thing to notice for sure are the well rails is that these guys are playing with somewhat of yellow ping or two green pings. Like, where's the server located actually, if you want to specify? I think they played, or they decided to play it on Puppy Palace Dallas, so... Oh, maybe we're having some sort of connection issues or something because look at their pings right now. They're actually just jumping up back and forth. I know. They're yellow pings and then now they're greens and who knows. Yeah. Yeah, and Broomfrag is a little bit high as well. I know he is from the United States, but northern United States. And then I know that Firestar and Horizon are both from Canada. So I'm not entirely sure 
I think the reason that they picked this server is due to the fact that we saw those, during your match, as a matter of fact, those wonderful problems with SDK. It usually doesn't do that, but it did crash in that last match, so. Yeah, the, it, the game took longer than expected because the game was just, we had to do a lot of restarts and whatnot. But anyways, we got the survivors going to the right side, trying to get those guns. Go for it, Rails. All right, we have that jockey getting shut down. We have the hunter going in there and getting melee skied actually by Sir Guzum. The spit's gonna go down onto nothing right there as long as this boomer doesn't proxy, but it does actually proxy and it takes Horizon back into the spit. So a partial shutdown, but almost the same amount of damage going out after that first hit. Yeah, and it's they're probably gonna take the, the tank from the same area as well. Well, we're gonna get to see what the SI tank is gonna do. They're probably, probably gonna. <clears throat> They're probably gonna do the same strategy as a as a other as a survivor team, right? And I mean, I think infected. yeah, we we touched on it, but I mean, I think the reason that went wrong for the last survivor team was due to the fact that it didn't clear those separation cappers and got really split up. So if they can avoid doing that, that would probably be better. It's gonna be a jockey charger, boomer, and a hunter for this hit as the survivors go forward. And would you hit now, Hib, or would you wait for the tank spawn? Well, actually, that's got answered for us. I was gonna say. I'd actually probably set one SI where the hunter is and then set the rest of the SI in the back on top of that main roof where the charge is climbing up right now just so you can have an attack on the way back and well yeah well they did what they had to I mean the tank is coming in right now with the hittable and they're probably trying to go for the same strategy as the survivor team when they were infected was doing yeah, I think they're going to try to put that in there and I mean we talked about the ways in which it can be played and it really depends if the tank First of all, it gets the hittable in, and then if he tunnels the hittable, but it looks as though he's just going to sit there and take a little bit of chip. What's the setup that you like going in with here? Because I think they're going to be trying to go in with this, with that boom landing too. This is probably going to be a commit. Actually, the way this is going, a tanker should probably go for the two boom guys. They're, they're one of the easiest targets to, to land. Getting the non yeah. one really makes it, uh, makes it difficult for the SI because... Not only can the, the survivor run away from the tank, it just makes the boom guys take care of the horde easily. But we have the tank going one down right now. He's downing another person inside the room, and now he has two people to the left. He's trying to get the cover, and he's going for Rochelle right away. I think he's got it. Yeah, he has that lockup on Rochelle, and the jockey should be able to clean house on Horizon right there. Nick Similar doesn't know situation. that the jockey is behind him, and he gets him. <laughs> oh my yeah. god, another one. Yeah. Similar situation we saw going out there with a the boom landing inside that small room, and that's actually both teams wiping 99 to 88 on the first map here. So we can see a whole lot of the first map, but I believe, depending on the tank spawns, we'll see what the teams are able to do with the residual maps here. And that boomer is really important, I would say, there, hit because if that horde lands, that room becomes a little bit less desirable. Yeah, definitely. So it's really dependent, like what you were asking me, it's really dependent about positioning and as a survivor it's really dependent about positioning you want to stay away from areas that you can get boom from and you want to have someone kind of like in the little uh <clears throat> there's like a little table with the uh, weapons you kind of want to have someone like in the middle right there to cover the bookshelf spawns that way they don't get booms from anywhere right there you can hard hard focus the tank so each each uzi clip does 1500 damage if you land all your bullets and from a close distance 1500 times three that is 3,500, and then you do damage with the shotgun. Max damage with shotgun is 1,200, so you can almost kill a tank, you know? Theoretically, you can just shoot, everybody shoots a clip out of the tank, and then just melees it once, and he can die right away. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was played like it was played, and, you know, the, as infected, as infected, you want to see for openings, like boomers like how they initiated like the infected on the second round initiated they got a double boom and they commit the tank right away really perfectly both teams are able to pull that off and at this point i think I, I, the reason i'm kind of like i never expected to see a tank spawn this late on this map but this is the second game in a row we've had 83 percent. i'm just sitting here kind of in disbelief because i that that tank is just so far far there's so much of the map that the survivors have to go through and then to be able to preserve that bonus would be kind of impressive to get to that point. We obviously saw it happen in your game earlier, but that might impact how they play the part of this map leading up to that tank spawn. I can't believe it's 83%. Rails, it's rigged, man. It's rigged. NF, NF, man. He did it on purpose. He wants us to see map two, especially NF, how okay. it's been changed. Yeah, yeah, we can blame him. I will blame NF for this, but we are going to be seeing Team Sultans of Suck stick their heads outside the safe room with their 11-point lead. It's going to be a Hunter, Boomer, a Jockey, and a Spitter. I don't know what NF stands for, but Boomer's going to get a... Well, he actually tried to get an Arc Boom, but then he did get popped. We do have the Jockey going in. Hunter getting skeeted. Spit's going to go down on not a whole lot of anything, and I don't know, Hib, what does NF stand for? 
I do not know. I have no clue. I think he might have mentioned it earlier, but I didn't really pay attention. I wish I knew, but I don't, so. Ask Mason. That's, that sounds like a good idea, but the survivors are actually high selling it right here, trying to push out through this next choke. There is going to be a hit up there maybe to intercept them. It's going to be a Charger, Boomer, and a Hunter, plus one more spawn coming into queue. And oh, what do you... What's up? Jockey? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, I thought it was going to be a spitter as well, I thought but it, it actually was wasn't. Yeah, I, since they don't have a spitter, I'd probably hit from close quarters because it's really hard to land boomers unless they rocket boom or they try to get it from the back or something. But it'd probably be more better if they hit from close quarters. That way you can try to go for the tri cap and separation. Uh, maybe multiple charges, but you know, they're going to wait for spitter. Yeah, they dropped that boomer trying to get that open field boom, but instead. I think, as you said, they're going to wait for that spit to try to hit the survivors maybe as they're dropping up here or something like that. The hunter got chipped and there also is a witch. So in a situation like this, Hib, do you want to draw the witch or do you want to try to go up for one of those regular crowns? Um, well, judging by the point where the witch is, you want to try to bait uh, SI to spawn up first. And then you probably want to like get close to the witch, maybe. Depending, if you know they don't have a smoker up, you can kind of get close to it. But you want to like, it's just, I don't know, I just kind of do a reaction. I just do a reaction. I just make the call on the spot, you know? So I'm not really playing. It's just I'm not really in that moment, you know? I don't feel like the adrenaline where I feel right. like, oh, I need to make that call in the, in the point time and place. Yeah, it looks as though the hunter is getting chipped as he's on the side there. It's going to be a charger, jockey, and a spitter, as we mentioned, for the rest of the hit here. And now we're going to see the hunter is still just bouncing around the witch. The survivors are playing it very carefully. They actually almost have the hunter picked. A couple more Uzi bullets, and that would do it. But there is some hardcore... Baiting, baiting going out right yeah hardcore baiting alternatively what they can also do is they can run back because they know where the witch's position is at and they can just drop crowner and just you know have the si um try to you know desync with the witch because right here they're more sync than they would be you know uh especially in a high tier caliber game but they do get the draw crown and it looks like coach will be grabbing the crown Oh wow, that Charger actually manages to land there and then a spit goes down on top of that. So even though they got the crown, that's a lot of damage going out onto Firestar. So they get the 20 points, but in that kind of situation, I mean, they drew the Witch and then they backed up pretty far. But when you do that, it gives an opportunity not just for the Witch to do weird things, but for the SI to also get their hit. And they managed to capitalize off it pretty well there, I thought. They do manage to find pills, so it's not really that much of a loss. But if you think about it, it's better than having one Witch in cap. And you also get 20 points for doing that too, so it's not too bad. Yeah, I mean, the only the only difficulty with that might be that they still have to make their way through the map, and they now have one survivor bleeding. But as you said, they did find the pills, so he will be able to at least remain fast. Charger Hunter Boomer Smoker going in right now. Smoker getting self-cleared. We do have that Hunter landing for a little bit of damage. Charger going for an intercept, getting leveled. Hunter got cleared. Pretty nice shutdown so far. Yeah, there isn't much to say about this. If they really want to get ammo, they need to go to that second little hut right there on the right side, just beyond that ramp. They're probably going to it right now, but we don't know if they know about it, so I guess they don't, and they're running away. Yeah, they're pushing forward, and then there's been a conversation as to exactly how much of this is like hard rain, or if it's like a custom map. Do you think this is more like, does it still feel like hard rain to you, or does it feel more custom map-ish? Well, map 1 and 4 really seems like the same thing, but as far as this second and third map, it's a really big different map, because you can't take it in the normal spots. I was talking to my team about this, and me as a caller, I... I tell my team we can't play in the regular spots because um, if you go up a bit ahead right here in the second in the second floor, it's not as wide as it is in the normal map. So you can't really take it in the second floor of the tanks. But I have seen teams do that. I'm just not as comfortable as uh, other teams would be. Right, I mean, I guess the discrepancies really lie in pretty much everything that could come from a competitive aspect, because this was designed by Xeon and NF, and they have a long history in this community, obviously. We have a Hunter, a Smoker, a Charger, and a Boomer here. And it looks as though the SI are going to wait to hit the survivors until they get a little bit closer. Either that or they're going to try some separation from behind. Boomer's going to go in there and does get a nice pop by Firestar. And I think he might have sacked because he was the tank. I'm not entirely sure. But in a situation like this, we saw your team play this earlier pretty well on the survivor side. Yeah, like I said, I mean, they could have run to the second floor right here. And like I said, like I was saying even before that, um, where the hunter spawned, the area is not really as big as it used to be. And the tank could actually commit from the third floor. If the tank can get to the third floor and commit in without much chip, it's just like an, almost an easy wipe. The hunter manages to land right here and they does get, manage to get a few ticks. Oh, man. If the smoker would have waited a little bit more, they could have probably got a charge off on coach right there. Yeah. Would have made a big play for the tank to, to commit on that and in cap them. 
tank is up for status quo into the hands of Kuzum, aka Sir Kuzum, and it looks as though, despite those changes here, they're taking on the second floor here, so that means that they're gonna have to be careful about the spawns that are not just added around them, because it is pretty similar, but also because of those changes in the schematics of that area. Yeah, well also what I was mentioning, like if you can, you can perfectly see that there's a ramp right there, right near where they're fighting, so it gives the SI actually an uh, easier way to get inside, you know, attack the survivors. Um, usually you have to climb up a ladder in order for the SI to come in and, you know, it takes a little while to do so. But you can just spawn right there um, on the ladder where Sir Cousin is kind of at. And you can just spawn right there, boom, attack him, charge him, boom, or whatever. You can arc boom it, you know? You have a lot of possibility for spawns. Here we have Sir Cousin kind of got the down on Ellis. Ellis doing a really good job streaking some punches, but finally gets cornered. He does manage to get it down. Oh, that's unfortunate. The tank actually killed the hunter in the middle of that, but the jockey does land for some step. Tank is now going to get a corner onto Amish. Missing that last punch, now he's going to hit it. That's going to be two down, so not a bad amount of damage to that area right there, but I think, unfortunately, when he went in, you mentioned the fact that he was getting juked out a little bit by Ellis in that area, and I think that's just the case that the tank was going a little bit too eager to get that initial corner before the tri-cap could go in. I mean, and also, Dark Hunter just took a lot of damage. Yeah. Uh, one thing to point out, though, is if, you're, if the team isn't really... Um, like these teams are a bit newer so they play a little bit more standard so they're more used to playing that spot but if they're not really comfortable with doing the LOS factor it's better to just play it you know standardized than trying to do something different like how my team does it it's just uh, you know better to get down the what, what could I say um, the meta game I guess I don't know right I don't know what the right choice of words but yeah the standards yeah, so we will see another hit coming in here right now. Nice Hunter Skeet going out right there. Spitter, Smoker, and a Jockey for the rest of the hit. Smoker going in from an unorthodox spot. We are going to have the Spit going down in the corner, and the Smoker also got cleared. Now, this choke's a little bit different here, Hit, because, I mean, we found out a little bit earlier that it's possible for the Survivors to attempt to skip the choke by jumping out that little window, but they also have a little bit more room to work in the cornfield there in terms of that pipe on the ground. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's a really crucial choke point right there that if you save a smoker and a charger you can really do big damage even probably death charge but they will be the survivor will be making it right here they seem to only be able to find one set of spawns with, with that big push and the charger seems to be coming in he went for the charge he missed it boomer manages to land to the hunters landing on the survivor and the charger is trying to get punches but he just gets killed yeah he got shut down a little bit there the jockey is still up to go chase after the other no! survivors. He actually goes and lands on health bonus in the front, so that's going to be a lot more damage going out than probably Sultans of Suck were looking to mitigate there. And yeah, I just looked at the bonus right now, just a second before that jockey actually landed. It was 336, and it really made a big difference. It's 220, 284. You know? Like, that's like 40 bonus right there. 40 bonus loss for one jockey on a Rochelle. You really got to be careful with that. And it makes a big difference, you know, especially with a close game like this one. It actually does, yeah, in that sense. I mean, obviously, we're now have to get, we're gonna have to see Stats Quo do a little bit better than the Survivor did the first round as well to match that performance by Sultans of Suck. And I don't know, I've seen typically the big score deltas open up in this map on like map two, map three, because the map four factor that's on Vanilla Hard Rain really hasn't come into play yet. At least from what I've seen. Well, yeah. Well, I I haven't really. Got a glimpse of other games. I only really played up against, you know, the team. The I only got to play last hour or so against uh, what team, whatever. But I just couldn't find any ammo anywhere. So I'm just like, what the hell do I do? I'll push back, push forward, eh, whatever. All right. I mean, that's another thing. Like, if the teams don't have experience with like that situation of like, I know you said you only had a couple games on it, but to be able to find that ammo, it does seem as though. There is like a, I don't know, not, not a lack of ammo, but it actually was brought up on the forums earlier today, but I think it was Dusty who said that they need more ammo in the map. But besides that, I think what Stats Queen needs to worry about right here is just making it as far as they can. Boomer spawning in the front, getting popped. Jockey going in, managing to land onto Nick. Hunter bouncing around, though, landing the double cap right there, as a matter of fact, just for a split second as the spit goes down. And it seems those survivors just got a little bit out of position in terms of shutting down those SI. Ooh, the SI came from the safe room, and you don't really see those tactics, you know, from a lot of teams. The, the team on Infected actually just, you know, they called that, and they played it perfectly. You know, with the 2-2, they got a uh, wall kick and everything, you know, with especially with the Spitter. They 
he just made a really good choice right there instead of attacking outside and they, they, they attack close quarters and they're gonna be doing that again right now with the charges they're trying to go for a charge pit charger manages to land spitter actually manages to land as well we're gonna see a few ticks her cousin may be going down no he doesn't and yep that was the hit it was indeed and that right there is exactly what team souls of suck are looking for they managed to get that charge spit in that area again hitting inside as you mentioned i mean these these chokes right here are a lot different due to the fact that the map goes from being extremely wide open to then being extremely condensed and like claustrophobic in a matter of steps and i mean what i've seen the common strategy be is take a hit and then push as far as you possibly can mm -hmm. however there is some separation right here nice double cap landing with that pull in the back and then the hunt in the front smoke is still going out jockey landing in front as well hit this is some massive separation right here holy shit rails what is going on that's a lot of damage and the jockey may be attempting to take the survivor right there uh, Rochelle to the witch hopefully they get to get this clear right away before they actually do manage to get they actually do manage to stop it before they get to the witch and Sir Cousin looks like he's gonna be going for the crown and he does not oh he does he got it crown. oh my god Sir Cousin you're such a beast 209 percent we have another separate we have another separated survivor in the back here yeah 209 percent is pretty good he got the second shot off that must have been very very interesting for and him and the accusations coming up <laughs> homage hacks MLG. So, one of the biggest things is that maybe the survivors aren't used to the quicker spawn timers with the new Promar. It's just that it makes a really big difference when you're pushing and when you're, you know, taking it easy. What I like right. to do is I like to tell my team, like, we kill SI, we're running, but we gotta start, you know, taking it easy because it's SI spawns are up. I try to give them a good idea of what spawns are up because I try to see what survivors, I mean, what infected die first and last, you know? Just a general idea, but. For the most part, we see the jockey coming in trying to delay. They do I have mean, two downs here, and they're gonna yeah, that that hit prior controls. to that was really good because I think they got like a pounce and then a charge and a spit on top of everything. And X Y C pills, he's saying, and I mean, at this point, as we said, like. I, I, you mentioned it too, like where it's like if they don't know the spawn timers, if they don't have that kind of rhythm, especially on a map where they don't know it too well, that's I think what we're dealing with right here. Like the combination of that lack of experience plus lack of map knowledge plus the fact that, you know, they haven't even gotten used to those new spawn timers that have come out. So it's going to be a spitter, a hunter, a smoker, and a boomer for probably an inside hit that we're going to see. And they're just scratching out the windows right now, making the survivors bleed. Yeah, and they're actually doing a really good job. They're playing the, they are playing the bleeding game. They're just making the survivors spend as much time in that room as possible, especially with three bleeders. The spitter manages to get a few ticks. And now they, they're playing the bleeding game perfectly. You know, you see three bleeders right there. And they finally decided to push. The SI will be waiting for their fourth, maybe? I don't know. Uh, Hunter so. go actually goes in. He gets a land to DP. The spitter is actually not ready to spit again, but the smoker manages to get a few ticks on Nick. Yeah, I mean, that spit's not going to be able to do a whole lot right now, but this Charger actually might be able to capitalize on this. Going in, swinging around, going to make his way in, and manages to punch down Nick, who I think had the last permanent HP. Now she gets a oh, charge, wow. but then gets cleared. Wow, that was really interesting, actually, because it dropped the Survivor in the spit puddle that was dissipating. And with these type of maps, you know, maps that you don't really see a lot of teams playing, especially like this one, it really shows who has more of a team chemistry, especially like this team right now has a little bit of separation issues. They just need to get a little bit close together and be ready to take off another choke point as a team instead of splitting up 2-2. Or actually just communicate if someone's too far back. Hey, I'm all the way in the back, please. You know? Right, I mean, that, that communication is so crucial, especially on a map like this where it's so wide open and so sprawling. There are so many spawns. Bitter Brimmer, Hunter, Smoker, so another 2-2 for this hit here. Boomer's gonna spawn up and manages to actually get a single arc boom. Nice 23 damage pounce right there onto Ash or Molly, and the spit's gonna be out on top of that too. And the thing I've also noticed, Tip, is that when you get boomed on this map, it really, really slows down your movement even more than the stock maps. Well, I really haven't... I really haven't uh, paid attention to that factor, but that was really that was a really nice DP by Firestar right there. Boomer manages to... you know, do nothing. <laughs> Imagine to do nothing. It's, it's okay. I mean, it, it's true. It, it was not able to land there. But, I mean, what I've been seeing is that, like, with all the ads, spawns, and that kind of stuff, the the SIs have found a way to get these kind of hits to be rattled off. That Charger is going to miss after the Smoker missed. And now the Smoker is going to go in there trying to get another pull. Hunter's bouncing around the front. There is another Boomer up, as a matter of fact. And... I don't know, like, at this point, the Survivors really just need to try to work their way forward. They're going to be behind by about, like, four or five hundred going into map three. And the so, biggest thing to notice is that they haven't even fought the tank yet. There's still a tank. 
in the possession of Team uh, Team Boomfrag, because I don't know what the team name is. I'm so Sultans sorry. Sultans suck. <laughs> Sultans okay. suck. Yeah. So that's going to be a Dolbum going out right there. That's going to be a pull out onto Rochelle in the spit, so another down. And the Boomer actually traps the survivors in the stairs, somehow does not proxy. That pull is still going out in this situation, but obviously we're seeing things not exactly go as well as they probably wanted them to for status quo, but there are a few other maps where they're going to be able to turn around. This Hunter's also going to troll. You know what? Props to Solstice of Suck. They're actually doing a really, really good job landing the Boomers. It's really being a crucial game right here, especially to slow down the survivors. It's find them enough time so they can get more hits. And... I mean... Pretty much we can say in any map, those landing of the boomers are probably one of the, if not the most important part of competitive Left 4 Dead, going right in there with landing cappers and etc. But like, a team that's constantly boomed really doesn't have a time to set up, you know what I mean? Like, they're constantly under duress. And then they also have to, they also get stressed because of ammo too. They have yep. to stop and, you know, shop a little bit for ammo instead of just pushing through choke points that they normally can. Right, and almost to, to pretty much put an exclamation mark on that, this Boomer is going to waddle in there on Rochelle, who is also fighting off a lot of common. Don't Charger. do it, Boomer. Don't do it. We don't want to see another one. No! Charger took Rochelle forward for a few extra distance points there. No tank, as x did mention. So that's some great SI work from Team Sultans of Suck. And then also, I mean, at this point, there are two ways this could possibly go. One, it's going to give us another late tank spawn, and then we're going to see Sultans of Suck find a way to reach that and get the distance points or it's gonna give us an early tank and that's gonna give us a chance for a turnaround from team status quo i'm hoping for an early tank so team status quo can get a, their chance of uh taking you know getting at least the comeback or oh we got it taking a lead oh we do oh my god there 23%. is a there is a left for dead to jesus and his name is gavin <laughs> are you sure his name is are you sure Listen. oh no wait his name is jacob sorry <laughs> i've been i've been told that you are the god of Left 4 Dead 2. I might be wrong about this, but it's just a rumor that I've heard. Oh no, dude, that's not me. I, I, I'm under, you know how it says under God? Under Jacob. Okay, okay, so Jacob is the true god. Yep. Understood. Jacob, I'm, I'm only a disciple of Jacob. I'm getting Swib to verify this according to XBuy. <laughs> but I don't know if he'll be able to Although verify. Although I don't deny any, any accusations or whatever. If people people will call me what they want to call me and whatever's, I mean, there's there's literally a hibble that happens in Kiss Me's Twitch chat during every single cast. Hey man, my strats are just one of a kind and they're pretty legendary, you know. It's I don't true. Call, I don't. I just don't call yay the standard, you know. I just try to change it up. I have fun with my teammates and hopefully, you know, they. Hey, you know what? What's the biggest thing that I I appreciate about my teammates is that they listen, you know. Like. I can say the stupidest thing, but like, they'll listen, and then they'll, they'll also tell me like, hey, that's kind of dumb, like, let's not do that. But for the most part, I haven't really had that problem. I told them, hey, attack from this left building, let's attack from this, and they know that I'm doing, you know, a right call. And if not, yeah. they just, they semi-ignore me, and I don't really take that <laughs> into offense. I just take it that they have a better idea than I do at, at the time, especially when it comes to infected play. Right, and you gotta you got give your teammates the ability to kind of improvise on their own and play their game. So, I mean, and that, that, that's the changing up the metagame I can definitely respect. We have a hit coming in right here from Status Quo. Single proxy boom going out, Charger Smoker and a Hunter for the rest of the hit. And they actually might save for a spitter here. That's not the worst idea that I've seen. Actually, if they can get someone to start bleeding out, they could play it in their favor. Definitely something to do right here. I'm looking at the tank spawn though, and I think they're getting rather close to it as well, so the SI actually might be able to capitalize on that and hit on the way back. The Hunter's already pre-spawned way in the back, they got the spitter that they need now, and the Smoker's gonna go for a separation pull in the front, oh. missing it. Charger going in, missing the charge as well. The tank is up in the hands of Horizon right here as the rest of this hit does go down, and now the spit's actually gonna go in because it was a bot spitter. Tanks up here, and Hib, what's the general idea on this new meta here? I mean, I'm asking you for the meta, just, or what you would like to do in that sense for playing tank as the infected here. Oh, well, you know what? I really don't have that much experience, you know, playing this tank right here or fighting against it. But what I have noticed is that if you fight in the back room right there where the survivors are at right now, the tank could actually just go to the corner and just curve rock, especially if he's really good at doing that. Example, players such as like Grizz or Ramirez, um, you know, those players that are known for curve rocking the best, um, you can really take advantage of that. But seeing 
as to this tank is, you know, uh, decent. Enough. Oh! Wow, they two. Set in the support, like, as the tank was going in, instead of waiting, which helped them out in the middle to get some of those caps, but now the tank's kind of left in a precarious position and is actually going to get shot for almost 3,000 damage hit. And the tank still has enough HP to actually do something. He does have a hit up on the left side, where on the bottom of the gas station, and he can actually play that too. He can play long rock tank. If they get boomers, they can just arc boom them too, so. They're not really in a bad position, but they are uh, as far as uh, infected. That's another, that that's another that thought. Him. Yeah, he might have thought that it was. And that, that would be an interesting change to make. He is committing now with his 3000 HP. They're going to have to help him out very, very early. Already down to about less than 1k at this point. Nice multi punch, though, going out. Another punch going out onto Coach. Boomer is going to manage to rock his way, and there does not get a proxy, unfortunately. Rock going out, managing to land. Tank's going to get a last punch almost there on Rochelle, so. I mean, he pretty much just salvaged it a little, like, I mean, just a tad there by getting the damage that he did, but obviously not the wipe they were looking for. Yeah, definitely. And it's, like I was saying, like, you gotta have a positive mentality. Even with the shittiest, lowest HP that you have, if it's like 1 HP, 2 HP, you gotta try to make the best of your tank, you know? You gotta try to, like, believe in your team. That's what I always say. Believe in your team. You're gonna, if they land, they're in capper, boom, you can get one more rock. One more rock equals to them. You know, possibly even using one more set of pills and etc. It just, you know, you can't just give up on your tech. This is something that I've noticed in the lower level. They usually have like only like 1k HP and they just try to like ramble the tank. But no, like you can still play a rock tank with it and you can still make big plays. Speaking of big plays, the Infector are looking for one right now. They have that boomer spawn in the front. Smoker getting a nice pull. Charger tries the intercept but does chest bump. Again, something else that our Lord and Savior Jacob said that he fixed. Charger got a punch right there. Smoker not really able to do a whole lot left, but that's another thing about this game, Hibs. Is some, things are, some things are just a little bit either fixed or broken at certain times. You know what? This time I just kind of like play the game. It's just, <laughs> I notice some things and, you know, I don't even know what to say anymore, man. Just some, I just play the game and just hope for the best. And sometimes it's <laughs> luck, sometimes it's skill. It's just, it just happens, and it's just this game. And you know, you just gotta be salty about it. You know, if something bad happens. You have reached stage five of playing competitive Left 4 Dead 2, which is acceptance of the fact that this game is the way it is. And I know exactly what you're talking about because we saw just how difficult it was to get through a full game earlier with some of the things that happened, either related to equipment or the game itself. So. Yeah, we changed the like servers three times, and then we were just like, whoa, what the hell is going on? It we're was playing three ridiculous. different servers? It we was should ridiculous. just play one different server for each map and <laughs> get different that, tank that. spawns and different registry and different pings and all this other crazy mumbo jumbo. Exactly. So we are going to see another hit coming in here, it looks like. Jockey, Spitter, Charger, and a Hunter. And they're coming in from the back right here. Charger actually lagging a lot as he goes in, clearing the pin on that hunter. Jockey going for the separate star outside. Magic land, there was some lag going on there, I think, on Coach's end. So that's going to be a full down. Wow, and they actually managed to get Coach down. I, you know, this is actually not too bad. They still have a lot of bonus, and they can still make the map with, you know, as much as they do. As much as, what, like 600 bonus? Yep, 600 bonus right now. Obviously, yeah. it's going to go a little bit lower, but, I mean... If they manage to play how they're doing, they should be alright and make it safe room with no problem. Yeah, I mean, and this hit here could do some nice damage depending on the separation that they get. It's going to be a Hunter, a Charger, a Smoker, and a Boomer. We're going to have that Hunter up top looking for a DP maybe or just distract starting off. And then the rest of the hit should be coming in. Boomer going in, getting popped. We are going to see the pull go out. Hunter going in for that DP. Not magic land. It's going to get skied. Charger is a little bit in front here. You're actually going to get almost leveled by homage and then quickly cleared. So another nice shutdown. And Hib, when did the metagame really change to become, instead of going for tri caps, to go for like full charges and that kind of stuff? You know what? <clears throat> I actually missed the spitters doing a lot of damage when they changed the spitters from doing a shitload of damage to like, like you know, by a shitload, I mean like 70 damage to like 30 damage now. Right. I don't know, people just started doing pull charges, especially, I guess Apollyon. Apollyon kind of like, had a, I think they're the one that mostly like coined the pull charge bits. Actually, you know what, it was actually before that, when we were playing MV, when my team was screaming MV a lot, they actually went for pull charge bits. And why? Because they were playing with a really high ping, and that's the best way to land charges, because landing solo charges was harder enough. This witch is going after the smoker. She's going after the smoker right now. 
Which? Now she's what gonna re-aggro, watch, watch, watch. If they kill Which this Parker, she's gonna re-aggro. What's she gonna do right now? Okay, never mind, she's gonna die. That's something right there. I mean, there was chip damage going out, but you again, we literally just finished talking about the luck versus skill versus RNGs of Left 4 Dead 2, and that was one of those situations where the Witch Reload. still has a pretty big impact on the game, just being based off of AI and sometimes randomness. And I, and I like that about this game, like, it kind of sucks, but it's kind of awesome too, just because you don't know what the hell to expect, and seeing it, even seeing a team wipe or, like, handle the the witch, you know, doing all these random, random mumbo jumbo, it makes it really entertaining to watch, you know, sometimes when it screws you over, you're like, shit, you know, but when it happens to another team, you're like, oh my god, this is so awesome, how did this happen, and they're just, like, smiling all over the place, and all these happy thoughts. Indeed. We have that boomer spawning off and getting popped right there. It's going to be a hunter, spinner, and charger for the rest. Nice damage pounce going out. Charger going in. Maddie to land a charge in the front, but unfortunately the spit was already down on the hunted survivor. So that's a pretty nice job right there by status quo. Getting some of that bonus off of someone's a suck. And there is one more pretty big choke point they have to deal with up here, and that is this green van that's crashed through the wall. Yeah, and they used to have 600 bonus, and now they're up at 312. Tw tw ah, I can't even talk. 312. Well, they seem to be... They seem like they're going to be making this whole health bonus if they can be able to shut down the last attack. They just need to outrun that smoker right now and just try to get through this choke point. I think they have almost succeeded in doing that. It's going to be a... Actually, it's going to be a 2-2 two -two with not a whole lot of damage potential, but that did just happen. The spit got a nice spread. Nice proxy right there, and they made something out of nothing in their head, kind of like we were talking about before, and that's going to be a full down almost on a Dark Hunter. Yeah, they just need to get into safe from ASAP so they can... Salvage that bonus right there. I mean, that was a pretty good job by Stats Quo being able to take out, as you mentioned, about around half of that health bonus. As a matter of fact, I think Dark Hunter is almost about to go down again. He's at one HP. There should be a couple spawns coming up. There's the charge, getting the pulling cap. Ooh. We are gonna. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice double cap, as a matter of fact. But luckily for Sultans to suck, they put their bonus as far away as possible from that hit. And the spinner went for the spit delay, and the hunter is trying to manage to get on Rochelle, but no, he does not. He gets shut down. Ooh, that could have been pretty hard rails, especially if they hadn't hunter landed on Bloomberg. All that trying to save health bonus for nothing, you know? That could almost. Be the, the hunter almost went for a couple scratches at the end there, too, but he did get M2 in the face before that happened. They are going to make the map with a total chapter score of 760 plus the 20 for the witch, so that's going to be 780, so not too shabby right there. Yeah, definitely. And at this point, though, so, Hib, let's say you're behind in a game like this, right? And you have that kind of score differential. What do you say to your team? I don't know. There's really not much to say. You can't really, like I said, you can't really go on tilt and be like, oh, this game is over. You got to try your best until the end, you know? Especially, you know, a team that's really known for doing big-ass comebacks is Bravo's team, actually, which he didn't manage to do so against my team, but... He is pretty well known to do so, and he has been doing a good job. Usually the map 2, map 3 comes back. Shots fired. Boom. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's shots fired. It's just kind of like, you know, I just acknowledge that Bravo, whoever Bravo plays with is a pretty good, solid team. He chooses his team teammates pretty wisely, but, you know, it is what it is. You've been on a team with Bravo before, haven't you? I actually have, and we actually played against... It was actually a weekend tournament. I played with him before, but we just have different styles of gameplay and different interests. But um, we did play when Apollyon was... When I wasn't in Apollyon. I think it's pre... When I was pre-Apollyon. Yeah. And we did manage to 6k them, and then Team NV managed to 6k them as well, right after in the tournament. I'm not sure which tournament it was, but it was the finals. It was something hosted by, I think it was one of the weekend tournaments hosted by Shade, wasn't it? Yeah, we played on the weekend tournament and then the NV and, and Team Grizz or Team Apollyon, <laughs> Team Grizz, Team Apollyon played uh, in the finals with, versus Team NV and then they got just wrecked. I'm sorry, but they got wrecked. We have a hit coming in right here from Team Soul. Oh, and the Charger can land this. Oh, he does manage to land this and they do manage to get the spin. No, the spin actually misses. No, Spitter, why? That was very unfortunate. Still I a lot mean... of damage though. Yeah, that's good pre-tank damage already, even for an early tank. And now we're going to see exactly... I don't know. I don't think they're going to have a hit when they come back, are they? No, they're already going to be able to get back outside, I think. And it's going to be up in the hands of Boomfrag. The tank, that is, in the hands of Team Sultans of Suck. And you know what, Hib? He's going a little bit of a roundabout way here. I think he wants his car. Is he doing a hip strat, guys? Is he doing a hip strat? I don't I know what you is. call this. It's not my strat, so it must be a Boomfrag strat. <laughs> Who's calling this right now? 
Oh, cards rolling back down. I mean, he's gonna be on near second pass by the time he gets this in. But there it is. That actually is quite in. That's gonna be in the corn or in the cane field. We had we had a discussion in Kiss Me's Twitch chat during your matches whether this is a cane or a cornfield. I believe it's a cane field. Other people thought it was a cornfield. Redux threatened to like kill all of us. I mean, that was like just Redux being that. It's sugar cane, exactly. But this tank has actually gotten his hittable in. So the only problem with this is that he's on second pass and he needs to like go in now. Well, what he can do is actually cut off the survivors. He can try to get on top of the building, but what he's doing right now is a pretty good job. Especially if they had a boomer, they could have arc boom and have multiple incaps. I mean, multiple boom right there to get multiple incaps. But the tank is managing to get some few punches, but struggling a bit. But he, they do oh, manage to manage to try cap. cap. And oh, now the tank is boy. just going for coach, and he does manage. To wow. Um, nope. Does manage to get the ground right now. Oh my Thanks. god, they need to, he needs to turn around and look for Nick, look for Nick tank. Look for Nick, look for Nick. tank, tank, oh, no! Oh, he did a good job, no, 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 he did a good job. If Nick could have shot the tongue, that would have been crucial too. But, tank, oh! Oh, that wow. hit a wall. Boom frag, boom frag, what is going on with you, man? Are you on roids? I don't think he's on roids. That, hey. that car strap was worth it, though. Mmm. -hmm. I mean, hey, that was... It, it didn't seem like the hill was really going to be a major factor there, but you know what it did? It actually made them flush to an area that they might not have wanted to take it in, because, as you mentioned, if a boomer had been there, they probably would have been able to get an arc boom over the top of that, but instead, it just, they, they just got pushed into an area where those three SI were able to land as the tank was doing work, so major props to them for putting that car in that position. Yeah, and similar to like what I like doing in scrims and matches, it's all kind of like mind games. They mind gamed one team, oh shit there's a car coming in play we should move away you know warning error error whatever you know and it made them fight in an uncomfortable spot maybe they like fighting it back there but since there was a car in play it just played a different factor for them and they were just like oh what the hell do we do now and they you know a kind of sense of panic too how many mind games have you employed on people that you've played against a lot man it's just it's just so crazy dude it 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 just yeah. Once you play a team over and over and over, and especially in scrims, you kind of get a feeling of what they do. You know, sometimes I like going back, you know, like on Dark Carnival and stuff. Oh, let's run back, and then some teams started to catch on. So I do a little bit of a uh, shift mind game. I make like a fake back, and then I go forward or do some crazy shit that people are like, question mark, question mark, question mark, and you know, it's just mind fucks everybody. It really does. We have a nice tri boom landing right there. Hunter's going down, trying to land on the coach. Quad boom, as a matter of fact, so some pretty nice chip damage off the safe room here. Yeah, and, and what you were talking about the map difference right here, this map right here, you really, well, if you get past that little house up up ahead, you want to run back towards it because that's the area that you can get ammo, you get ammunition, and it's a really good open spot to fight the tank it. Um, they do manage to land a crown, Dark Hunter. Good job, bro. Shout out. So the rest of the hit is going to be coming in right here. I say rest because that witch is technically the fifth SI. Joggy getting chipped, Smoker spawning a little bit too far behind, Boomer getting popped as a matter of fact. These pops by Sultans of Suck have been very, very nice. That Hunter is going to land for a split second, but the rest of the SI are going to have to despawn, and I think we're going to see the tank at 45... Yeah, they say 45%, so that should be probably when they get through this Blood Harvest house. Yeah, and here's a here's a little tip, guys. Like, You should try to look for arc blooms, because if you try to rocket your boomers, it takes like a little bit of a while to you know actually land and get the boom. And then you put yourself in a position where you can get M2. A really nice rock, actually, from the tank right there. He is managing to play rock tank. The survivors have no clue where the hell the rock, the tank is. Actually, now they probably do because they just saw that rock. But now, it seems like the survivors don't really know where the hell they're going to fight this tank. They're just kind of a little bit puzzled. They're... In my opinion, in my opinion, I think they're waiting for one attack and then they're probably going to shift to a place that they want to fight. I think they probably are as well. We are going to see that charger going in, managing to land. We have a nice smoker cover as well. Tank is keeping sight and playing rocks right here. Rock going in, getting skeeted, and this is a situation Hib where they're either going to decide to stay here, go forward, or go back. It looks like they're going to try to LOS right now while the spawns are up, but then, I mean, while the spawns are down, but they do want to push forward. Like I was saying, they're going to get ammo. They don't want to run out of ammo. They want to get ammo, and they want to fight it right here in this open area, which is a bit... It's kind of like 50-50, it just depends on coordination on both the survivors and the infected, so yeah, we'll see what happens right now. 
We are going to have this tank throwing another rock in. I'm missing the rock. I think they actually want to send a hit on the SI side of things. Tank's going to be taking a pretty good amount of ship here. Now we're going to have that rock missing. Tank actually might decide to go in. Nice separation pull to start. Boomer rocketing off the roof. Getting a nice boom. There's a rock landing as a matter of fact. And... <laughs> And the tank making actually a pretty good judgment right there. I mean, I don't know if I would have taken that route, but probably going inside that house to not take chip or whatnot, you know? Because he was in the open area after he landed the rock. He was just on top of that roof. He could have probably just went inside the, you know, the roof and, you know, go elsewhere to try to throw more rocks. But he did manage to get away safely. And he is doing a really good job trying to get more rocks. He just needs to keep coordinating with this SI so he can land more rocks. Yeah, I mean, it looks like they're trying to play as a rock tanker. He actually might be able to jump in and get that survivor. Oh. He's almost almost landing the intercept. And now we're going to see that jockey landing. Tank is trying to get the corner over here. He's missing, missing his punches. What is going oh my on? God. Tank, what you, is can, you need to get out. You need to get out. Please, please. There's a guy inside the room. You want to get out, especially with this HP, and you want to salvage it. You don't, please. No, Tank. No. 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 That's how the tank said when, when he died, when he's like, <laughs> no! <laughs> but definitely, like, when you get down in the room like that, one of the best strategies that you can do, especially in a room like that, you want to have your tank cover him, and then whatever SI you have up, if he's managing, if, if he's able to manage to get away, get the hell out of there and help the tank cover the down guy. What you can do is buy enough time for your SI, and then you can all pretty much stack up on that guy. You can either kill him with the hunter or you can use the whole SI to attack the remaining people, you know? You have the numbers advantage instead of just having the tank going in, trying to ramble and everything. But I mean, he did a little bit of damage there. I think he could have gotten a little bit more, but at the same point in time, the survivors did a pretty good job of killing the tank once he committed like that. He probably could have decommitted like you said, but I mean, at this point, Stats quo, they realize they haven't gotten the wipe, they can just keep playing as we mentioned before, trying to get their attacks as coordinated as possible, and, I mean, they can still have the potential to do a lot of damage with the remainder of this map. Mm hmm definitely. But See, they, they are doing a, a lot of damage, I'm just, it's very unfortunate that the tank couldn't get that cover on the, on the second survivor. He was trying his best, but it was just missing punches. I'm not sure, you know, it could be different factors, but, you know. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was due to somebody teleporting, because I thought I saw a little bit of that as well. It was either on the tank side or on the survivor side, but, I mean, despite the despite the ping disadvantage here for someone to suck, they've still done a pretty good job keeping it together, and I think there's only like one or two more hits before the safe room, so it's probably going to be a boomer, spitter, jockey, and a smoker. So, I, guess I mean, this is why they would call themselves Sultans of Suck. Sess! this time because they're probably they're probably gonna win this map right now so you know they probably are yeah i mean we have that pull going out in the back and it looks as though dark hunter is the one who is carrying the bulk of the bonus he was not involved in that last hit so that's good on them and speaking of their success i think that's gonna probably give them a safe room yeah sultan sultan of suck says it's gonna be you know making it to safe room right now with uh, about 300 bonus you know and yeah man they're making they're really closing it in Getting that victory over team status quo. Unless status quo can get a miraculous bonus, I don't really see them, you know, winning this game, unfortunately. Indeed, and that's going to bring the total score of 14 souls to suck to 2,583 points. Look, cuz I'm red, cuz I'm listening to the chat. Rudy says. Rudy. Okay, no, man. What? He's listening to the chat? Yeah, he's listening to our conversation, man. That, yeah, I mean, he could be. I mean, he could be hacking and is somehow Hacks, bro, involved. Hacks. Yeah, I mean, Hunter Jockey safe for him? He has, he has a third ear, like, behind his head. He can listen to us. Listening to the... Well, I mean, yeah, he could have a third ear, but I mean, I, I don't think... I don't think there's... Like, I think x has enough hey, delay on his stream to where there really can't be a whole lot of ghosting, you know what I mean? Yeah, I was just kidding, but anyways... Speaking <laughs> of this map, where, have you played your match, Rose? Yeah, I did. Yeah, where did you take it right here? For what, this tank? Mm-hmm. We had the, I believe we had the tank that was in that area. We kind of fought around the house, and I'm trying to remember if the tank on the other team brought in the hittable or not. I don't believe, actually, no, we had the early tank, so we didn't really actually have to deal with that. Like, it was more closer to the regular hard rain map 4 tank that we usually see happen near the safe room here. All right, but. So now we do have a smoker, boomer, hunter, and spitter up. You know, a lot of things can be, you know, can happen right here. 
Uh, I'd probably go for like a pull and a boom, you know, pull boom and the rest, and probably pounce one of the boom people with spit. It'd probably be a lot of damage, but we, I don't know what to expect here. I mean, depending on what the survivors do, they just don't really want to get themselves separated in an area like this because the, the clears are out to be quick, not only due to the boom spit potential, but also due to the water slowdown and the residual horde that's outside. So, depending on what the SI do now, I think. The biggest change is going to be the fact that there is this opportunity for the SI to spawn off the roof. And that's exactly what two of them are probably going to do. Boomer's trying to get a B-hop in, not going to land, stumbling the Hunter, Smoker gets a pull, Spit is going to go down on top of that, and that's actually going to be an okay amount of damage from the Spitter chip right there. That should also give him the Witch. Status quo, we believe. Keep going, status quo, keep going. You got this. You got to keep your head up high. Yeah, and you know what? I really like the fact that they're one of those teams who decide to come into the community by playing together, you know what I mean? And it's rising up through the ranks that way, because not a whole lot of teams do that nowadays. Mm -hmm. And getting, I believe these teams are, they have one victory each, I mean, yeah, right? So that's actually pretty good, I mean, I mean, a lot of losses, but they actually managed to get a victory, and that's really good, especially for morale, you know? Coming to your first tournament and getting one, one win, um, you know, against different number of teams. And you we can do only, have... Yeah, I mean, we have separation going out right here, and I, I think I think you do raise an interesting point there, because, like, this is actually not Soul and the Sucks, like, first tournament together. I think it was RBT2, where they played under the name Nubs of a Feather, when they came in without, like, any pro mod experience whatsoever, and they started playing there. Now, this is their second tournament, and they've already made a vast improvement, as you can mm -hmm. see. Definitely, man, and it looks like they are attacking pretty... How, how could you say it? Coordinated? Mm-hmm. Exactly, bro. Thank you. Speaking it's of that, it's just like right in the tip of my tongue. But anyways, the boom manages to land three. The tank looks like he's gonna be coming in. What do you think, bro? Indeed, he is, and I think he is gonna opt to throw a rock here to secure his corner onto Rochelle. This is not looking good right now for Status Quo. He still has like 4.5k HP and he has another corner. Melee doing work on the back, but the tank's gonna turn around and take short work of that. Nice multi punch going out. Status Quo are in a bad position here, but Alice actually gets a Simi Juke there. We are gonna see a rock go out, Hunter managing to land, and that is going to be another wipe onto Status Quo from Sultans of Suck here, Hib. Yeah, they really need to watch out for those boomers. Those boomers are making a big play for the, for the team Sultans of Suck. They're really. Getting... Oh. Damn, I'm just lost for words right now, man. This is just some good infected play. It really makes me smile. It is. I mean, and that, that infected play that we've seen there, and that's the most important part, because in every game that you play with your team, right, depending on whether it's a win or it's a loss or whatever you have, if somebody manages a tie in this game, hats off to you. But, I mean, the situation is that each time that happens, the chemistry gets a little bit stronger. You know what I mean? Unless it's like one of those games where everybody's just kind of screwing around. But even having fun together is a great way to bond with a team. And obviously, I actually got the opportunity to play a 3v3 with, I believe it was Sultans of Suck and then maybe even Sir Kuzum, like just in a friendly way earlier today. And like the atmosphere is really, really good. And that I think is the most important part of this game in that sense. Definitely. And it really sucks because before people would be so hostile. They're like, oh, I don't want to teach you anything because I don't want you to get better than me. But now it's a more friendly environment. Not just like TFPG and stuff, but it's just... Uh, people seem to want to help each other more to make this a more competitive, you know? To make this more competitively... Uh, competitive greatness, I would call it. I don't know, but I'm going to try my best to share my knowledge with other teams and hopefully, you know? People get something out of it. I do especially thank x by for what he's doing. Um, he's been spending a lot of time and hours, you know, giving us a lot of uh, info and tips on different things. Even though I never really looked into x bys work. <laughs> cough, cough. Just kidding. <laughs> I never um, actually used anything that x by has used, but he did. We are going to more. leave this where it is for right now oh because God. I did. Hey, attack is a... <laughs> <laughs> we have a double cap landing as a matter of fact, that smoker and that hunter both managing to land. The boomer is just kind of waddling around on the other side. There is a witch already spawned. They are going to kill the rest of these SI without taking a whole lot of damage. And like I said, we're going to leave We're going to leave what happened in the caster worm before the cast started where we were waiting in that spot and we aren't going to mention it, right? Yep, we're not. Maybe Good. after this game, but then, uh, uh, yeah, know, we that's can... another time. That is another time. That can that can be its own match. It'll be Hib NA versus X Fly NA. Anyways, we do have the survivors coming up to press the button right now. They seem to have 
stumbled upon a witch right now. They will be trying to draw on it, maybe. Apparently someone mentioned that you might have accidentally spelled Sultan's wrong on the billboard, x -Bi. I'm not exactly sure if that's true or not, but someone who, with a with a keen eye in chat, caught that fact. Oh, but... to be, but to be fair, x -Bi can't even spell x -Bi, right? You know, he spelled it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, x -Bi. I had to call you up on that, but... <clears throat> Yep. It's true. It's damn true. Oh my god. <laughs> they seem to be putting up the what the shopping carts in front of the little house right here to shoot the witch and they're probably gonna run back. Indeed they are. They still haven't gone for this witch. I mean, they're trying to make the roof jump now, which is harder to do in this version of Hard Rain than the regular version. It's a jockey, spitter, a smoker, and a hunter. And I think they're going to remote this witch pretty close. Actually, they're going to go in and just go for the straight crown. Nice crown going out. Hunter managing to land with a spit on top of that. Smoker getting a pull in the back. And that's... That something right there is evidence of having a good balance, I would say, between baiting and going for something. Like, they knew the SI respond after they baited a little bit, and then they went in and they managed to take advantage of that by killing the witch. Yeah, and... I believe it was Dark Hunter. He shared a lot of confidence, you know? He... They were just, he was just talking to his teammates and he's like, hey, team, what should we do? Draw crown or should I just go for it? And then he just consulted with his teammates and boom, he just decided he was going to go for the crown and definitely got it and it paid off. It didn't really take too much damage, but now like it's all up to the tank for team status quo. Indeed, I mean, they have a smoker, hunter, charger, and a boomer for this hit. It looks as though the smoker and the boomer are attempting to spawn inside. Smoker going to get a pull. It's going to get immediately cleared, though. That's going to be a nice charge landing in the back. Again, very, very quick clears. And then we do have that pull going out on the boom frag. But again, hit only a little bit of chip damage, not really a whole lot of connected damage. Yeah, and what you're going to really notice about this map right here, especially map 5, is that there's actually rain slash water slowdown on the ground. Map 1, I don't believe there was uh, water to deal with. So they will be wanting to jump on top of the box right there where Rochelle is. And they will, will try to have at least one or two survivors on top of those uh, soda machines or whatever. Rochelle's, yeah, the soda machine's in the corner right there. And I think if you stand where Rochelle is sitting, you actually can't get hitbox. We are going to have our tank. Do you see where Nick's standing? That's kind of where you want to have one sur uh, survivor position. That way he, co he covers the bookshelves. That way they're not, you know, close, they're not close to the boomer, as shown by Rochelle doing a good job getting that boomer pop. Indeed, and the tank is actually going to be trying to put his hittable in. The tank is in the hands of Ash Romel once again. I believe he actually had the map one tank here that did get the solitary wipe for Stats Chloe. He's going to be taking a lot of chip in this situation, oh though. Oh my god, Rails. Holy what? chip. What? Holy chip. Holy chip? Yeah, holy chip is correct. He's down to about 3.5k HP already, and he actually, unfortunately, did not get the hittable in. So, in a situation where you have this, you've seen less chip at a Mexican restaurant. That's interesting, x I I can agree with that. We are, that rock almost actually did land a hitbox here, but if you have a tank in this situation now, Hib, do you commit the tank or do you try to play rock? Oh, I mean, you can definitely play rock tank, but I mean, what what I like to do is I kind of like going for rock tank because the more rocks you land, the more damage, more gradual damage that you can do, especially if you can trust your team to land a lot of SI. Even one or two SI that lands and you're getting a rock makes a big difference because you'll get rage and you'll also be able to get like you know put yourself in a position where the survivors are like oh man what do we do we need to kill this tank shit we can't follow him so we have to just you know we have to just be kind of like sitting ducks here indeed and they actually did manage to get the kill on that tank quite nicely right there they still have two survivors with a large point of bonus and then also i think they yeah they're still gonna have four sets of pills here on their persons x -Bi saying something about going to sleep i don't know about going i, I don't know x -Bi. i don't know X-Bi might be starting to zone out, Hib. Yeah, poor x -Bi, man. Nice boomer pop going out right there. <laughs> going to third person and going AFK. And then we have a smoker, jockey, and a spitter for the rest of the day. I think they're probably going to save in this situation. Mm -hmm. But that being said, I mean, they got to really focus on Coach and Ellis. And well, I mean... You know, with x -Bi, you know, he's getting really sleepy because he spends most of his time, like... Finding out these exploits and uh, saying GG to Valve like every single time, every single hour that he gets. Oh shit, GG Valve this, GG Valve this. I mean, GG Valve this, GG Valve that, you know? And I mean, it gets pretty exhausting to, I mean, yeah, x I do understand that you're really exhausted, but you gotta get this show on the road, man. What is the banging in the background, Hib? It's a firework, I don't know what's going on. Why is there fireworks at like October? <laughs> what the hell? 
Alright, there's that. We have a smoker pole going out, and then a hard hitman, he's there after that conversation that we're not going to mention. The conversation that shall not be named, that was involving AIM and the other accessories that go along with it. You know, the charger looks like he's going to be going for dead charger. Can he oh! land the dead charge? Oh, he doesn't go for the dead charge, but he actually goes for multi charge, but he lands a single and he lands a bit of damage. AOL Instant Messenger, what about that X-Fi? But ASL? H6 language? <laughs> no, not ASL. AIM. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly but that's, what we're talking that's about. A, that's a joke. I understand. Know? Yes, I understand what ASL is. Oh, and please. Then, uh, tell, tell us more about this ASL, Rails. Oh, no. Well, it's uh, The only reason I really know is because that's what Kiss Me has in his join message whenever he joins an STK server. It has the age that he is, it has his sex, and then it has his location. Oh, and under sex, he puts a lot, right? <laughs> Location where he wants to have sex in the bedroom. Is that correct? I I don't know if that I I don't know honestly. Like I haven't thought that much about anyone in this community's sex life. But I mean, if we want to go that route. And then as for the age, he's like, "Are you over 18? <laughs> I mean, are you over 17? <laughs> the kiss me. That's how kiss me gets girls. He does ASL in real life. <laughs> hey girl, what's up? Are you over 18? <laughs> this you like, is you like it having meme. sex? This is a absolute meme. Like, people are asking about what conversation before. It's, this is better than the conversation. Uh, maybe not, actually, depending on... No, can you the guys... conversation before was so good. We just gotta kind of jump into it, man. Can both oh, we really have up? to save it after. Oh shit, it's ready up time. <laughs> Xbox called it. Whoops. Oh my gosh, this is the last, this is the last half of the last round here for this match. Team Status Quo on the Survivor and Team Sultans of Suck on the Special Infected. Sultans of Suck have pretty much taken this game already, yes him? And I just noticed the scoreboard and holy shit, damn, Sultans of Suck, damn. Done a pretty good job, I, I completely agree. No, you really don't. You don't notice this, but like, Soldiers of Sex really have come a long, a long way. Like, I look forward to, you know, seeing more games from them. Indeed, we have a single boom going out there. Hunter actually going for scratches. More scratches coming out from the smoker. And now it's going to be seeing how Team Status Quo can handle this witch. So, I mean, obviously we saw it go a little bit worse in your match earlier today, where we actually saw a team wipe on the witch. But if they're a little bit more careful, they might be able to do pretty well coming out of that. Yeah, well, all they have to do is just kind of wait, you know, gather together, find, figure out a strategy. Just same thing I sold them suck. Kind of bait a little bit and then go manage to get that witch crown. But we'll see what happens. I mean, they still got, like, they're still wearing off the horde from that boom. But I think we're probably going to see them playing it rather slowly. And as a matter of fact, they're just kind of jumping around inside here. I mean, for some reason, this, I, I think the reason this closes off is that survivors can't go back to the safe room. But I think it would be more interesting to see some other work around there so that somebody could still get that hatch back out of that room but I think they're just baiting it here to clear out the common I'm not entirely sure though wait you can't jump back to the safe room area? mm-mm oh I didn't know you even know that yeah yeah Dude, they I would have called the hip shot I would have been like hey guys let's go to the safe room and then it would be like hey guys we can't jump over shit we're fucked <laughs> the tank comes into the hittable car and then we're just like trying to jump over and it's like no Done. And then people, the model team be like, Hib, why'd you call this up? And I'll be like, I don't know. It's just hit can, things. I can imagine that you say things sometimes and Han just sits there with his face in his hands. Ah, uh, dude, Han's laughing the whole time, dude, generally. And then I'm just like laughing my ass off because he, if you ever heard Han laugh, he has like the silliest he does. laugh ever. And it's just, yeah. It's just a pleasure playing with him too. He's a good guy. So we had that successful crown right there. And as a matter of fact, Status Quo did shut down the rest of the hit. So, obviously, great job by them to kill that witch and then not take any residual damage. And all they have to do now is go up there, start the event, and then hold out until they get to that tank. You know, and again, as you mentioned before, anything that they can do that they can then point to as a positive, that they can work and, and improve on, you know, is something that's definitely going to help them. Did they start the... I guess they did. I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, they did, actually, because the common are coming from the left side. Um, well, they're actually being like, you know, a bit, bit more closer on this map. Well, it makes a lot of sense because it's finale. But they are seem to play a little bit better. Like if they they played like this since the beginning, they probably would have had a lot closer game. 
Yeah, I mean... Except I've for seen... the tank play, though, because the tank has really been making a, you know, gradual uh, point difference in this map. I mean, yeah. Just, uh, I mean, I think that's where the learning curve is, too, in all of competitive Left 4 Dead, talking about, like, tank play and that kind of stuff. Like, you can shut down hits that aren't related to the tank, and then on the tank is usually where you see a lot of the damage go out to newer teams or with those wipes until they learn the meta, and then also how to change the meta to fit their needs. That's really all the point. Somebody's tried to call a kick vote. I'm not exactly sure on who, but... Spitter, Charger, Smoker, Boomer for this last pre-tank hit as the tank is coming up, as a matter of fact. It's gonna be in the hand of Dark Hunter. We have that Charger going in, not managing to land. Boomer does land a double boom, but... This boom just landing, man. It's just, like I'm saying, like it's all about positioning, and they position themselves right next to that little opening right there. Then the Boomer managing to open too. You know, at this point right here, it's really tempting for the tank to get a corner, look for a corner right away, especially since they're boomed. But the tank is doing a really good job being patient, just waiting for SSI to come. If they still do have managed to have a, a horde, the tank could probably commit. You know something? Um, here's a little kind of tip. You see where Ellis is at right now? If you can get a down right there, especially behind an object or like a solid object, like a bookshelf, take that down. Why? If, if you're getting it down and the survivors aren't chipping you, you're, you're gonna have a shitload of HP to, you know, to manage to, to use against other survivors. Um, it's also the, the, the SI, if they're trying to, I mean, if the survivors are trying to shoot the tank and they have to keep following him, you know, step by step everywhere he's going, the survivors are gonna take their face away from the from the SI, and the SI can manage to land uh, multiple caps. Indeed, and we actually saw that tank going in there on his commit, managing to land a few punches with the SI support helping. And, I mean, he still has about 2,000 HP up, jumping back in, getting a nice drop punch on the Nick, and now he might screw around with his hatchback a little bit. He's got press up against that door. I don't think that fits in there, Hib. I'm not entirely sure. I don't know, man. This guy is probably an expert at Tetris, and he probably has mastered some sort of uh, art of uh, shrinkage, if you get what I mean. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> the tank is probably going to go for a rock right now. I do not know. H sex location? Yeah, that's probably something Kiss Me would do, but... Um, let's see. The Boomer Land needs to land two of them, and he's looking for another corner on Nick, and he's probably going to get away. Tank, get away. Yes, you're doing a good job. Rock when your SI is up. So right there at this point rails, right here, you gotta notice this. The SI can come from the little window right there, and it can come from the bookshelf, and heavily right. to have the survivors pay attention to that side while the, the tank can drop from the right side door. Oh, oh we got a rock. To land a rock. Really good job by the tank. But yeah, like I was saying, the tank can go to the door and th manage to throw a curve rock while his SI is going, and he could play a longer tank than you know he usually can. Look at his HP rails. Look at his HP. Look at what pass he is. 671. Look at, frustration. look at his frustration. He's making a big play out of no HP tank. And look at his SI. He's going. The SI is in, and he's going to get another corner and another down. This is what I'm talking about, rails. This is what I'm talking about. If he's able to somehow get out, which is really impossible because there's no way to get out of here. But look at that damage, rails. That's exactly yeah, I what mean, I'm talking about earlier. He salvaged it. He completely salvaged that in the sense that he was able to play that out even longer than we expected. But on the other hand, we do have stats quo killing that tank. And that should permit them probably to make the boat if they don't take a whole lot of damage on these next couple of hits. So well played both the humans and the zombies, I can say. Mm -hmm, definitely. Good show by both survivors right there killing both tanks. Now it's a matter of fact if, uh, now it's a matter of it, will they be making it to the boat and how much damage will this make? That's the monsters, the monsters. We have a nice boom proxy going out though. That's very unfortunate because that is all their health bonus. That was on Ash going down in the water there. And it's just situations like that hit where like they take the tank well, but then I think because we're still talking about them being on that learning curve, it's like some hits do random damage when they probably shouldn't. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I'm proud of these guys for you know sticking it all the way through and you know, trying to even, you know, being in this tournament, a lot of teams have unfortunately, you know, dropped for numerous different occasions, but these guys have managed to stick it out and still managed to play their matches, you know? I really respect these teams um, and playing it through and, you know, trying to learn, especially with this next match experience. Um, Sultan of Sucks has truly shown that um, you can definitely get better if you keep practicing. Exactly, and that is actually one of the reasons why the RBT has always been a Swiss-style tournament, to give newer teams the opportunity to do that and play it out and do the best they possibly can. So then that'll, that'll encourage them to keep playing in the community as they keep getting better. And the points are frozen at 420 right now, so even the server is memeing us. And I think we're at the point where they are going to be able to make this boat, because yeah, the points just jumped, there's the boat. And you know what, they actually might be able to point it as a point of pride if they are able to get on this boat with any kind of bonus at all. 
Real, I have a question for you. What? These guys all yellow ping when we first started. What the hell is this? Now they're all green ping? What? I don't know. It was a situation, I guess, where they had their internet improve over the course of the game. I'm not entirely sure. Charger going in for Ash right there, getting a lot of punches. Hunter landing with Spit, also down in codes. That's going to actually be almost three in caps, and that was humorous. I'm not exactly sure what happened there. Hib, did you catch it? I just saw a lot of cluster flat, and this charge is going for dead charge, and he manages to miss. Come on, status quo. I believe. No, status quo. Why? I just believed for a second and you guys died. Why did you do this to me? <laughs> I don't know, but well played by both teams, definitely. Congratulations to Team Souls and Suck. They are going to move to 2-2, two and two, as a matter of fact. And unfortunately for status quo, they are going to drop to 1-3. and three. Souls and Suck takes the win, 3,691 to 1,278. So again, good job by them. Any general thoughts on that game, Hib? Nah, just Souls in the Sucks just merely outplayed uh, Team uh, SOS, you know? I mean, Team uh, Status Quo. Uh, they did a really good job with their tanks, and they managed to get the wipes that they needed. Unfortunately, unfortunately to Status Quo, you know, the opposite happened. And, you know, they, they got maybe like one wipe out of all their five tanks, but they still managed to do a lot of damage here and there, you know? Still not, nothing to be ashamed of, you know, you're learning and you get better the more you play. And we look forward to more matches of both teams. Indeed, and we are have more RBT3 round four matches coming tomorrow, which is Sunday, so the last day to actually play the matches in that sense. But again, good job to both those teams. They, they, are, they are teams that both like scheduling late, I can say that much. But the big shout out to x for streaming this game and to you, of course, Hib, for casting it with us here. So... I think x is at the point where he's ready to pass out after saying those GG yeah, Valve for sure. things. Thanks for having me here, too. Sorry about the little bit of stutters or pauses or stuff. It's just, I'm just a little bit exhausted. Just been having a long day, but it's, it was pretty good, you know, just paying attention to how these teams play and how we can help to improve the, uh, them, you know? Especially just, like, just noticing, like, different styles of uh, how they take the, the attacks accordingly uh, when you uh, compare them to, like you know, higher tier play. Exactly. I mean, there were, there were good examples throughout the entire week. I would say that these teams can definitely take away from in terms of improving their gameplay and watching those casts. So again, the more experience they get in that kind of sense and the more that they are then able to see, you know, by playing against better opponents, you know, that, that, that's, that is one good way to improve as a team. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to the next map. And the next map will be dead center and... That's a map that I'm really comfortable with, and I look forward if, you know, people come through, come watch some game, and, you know, hearing me call these hip strats and the hibble and et cetera. Et cetera. That is the best way to describe Left 4 2 community. So, yes, thank you, everybody who watched. Thank you, XBy, for streaming, and thank you, Hib, for casting, and have a wonderful rest of your evening, ladies and gentlemen. Peace.